Hey, good morning, you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So I am literally rolled just out of bed like 20 minutes ago, actually 30 minutes ago. Um, and I am going to be leading a, um, actually, let me just pop on Instagram real quick. Talk about being like, looking like hell this morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, you guys, how are you? Sorry for the bad lighting. There's nothing I can do about that. I am actually, um, in a hotel right now and I didn't bring, um, I didn't bring any, uh, extra lighting. So it is what it is. Sorry. Anyway, good morning, Amelia. Good morning, Jamie Bogan. Good morning, Holly. How are you ladies this morning? Uh, Laura, hello. Um, what are you guys excited about this morning? I'm going to get into some of my favorite topics actually. Good morning, DJ. How are you? Katia, good morning. Suzanne, good morning. Christy Miller, good morning. Denise, good morning. Do you like my morning dew? This is, this is the worst lighting on the planet. It's like the whole room. I'm in this cute little suite at the hotel. I'm about to leave my marquee mastery clients today. I'm in this cute little suite, but it's all yellow. So it's like super homey and cozy. I can kind of show you around a little bit. It's like super homey and cozy. It's like the outside actually you can't see but the oceans out there it's really pretty my family is in that room over there you can't see the door but they're actually in there sleeping right now so um, but anyway I am probably in the worst lighting I've ever seen <laughs> anyway um, okay so let's get started um, good morning you guys good morning good morning good morning I would love to hear what you're excited about this morning excited about the opportunity to be here right now yes that is true I'm excited to be here with you you look great in the morning thanks Christy appreciate it I think I look I think I look a little crazy but that's okay this is what coffee with Shanna is all about right we get to be just authentic and who we are and show up no matter what um, I'm so excited today to share value with my tribe on Facebook live interview today. Awesome. Uh, invite peeps to a new private coaching program. Great, Lisa. That's super cool. Um, isn't it cool to be able to do work in the world that, that creates transformation? I mean, I just think I was saying, um, my marketing mastery clients, I don't know. So you guys are on here. You might give me shit for this, but I actually was saying to somebody, uh, yesterday I was saying, sometimes I feel like my marketing mastery clients who I love by the way, and they're rock stars. Um, sometimes I feel like they're the school of spoiled children. And I say that because, um, they get so much value and they get so much help to build their businesses. And many of them are skyrocketing and making 300,000, 500,000, 700,000, you know, approaching a million. And, you know, they've worked with me for like some of them four years and some of them like one year. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you're making a million dollars in four years of starting your business with me, I think that's pretty great. Um, but yet they, there's many people who are still in this conversation of not being happy, um, or they're not, um, appreciative like and it, it reminds me of um, even like checks my own self in my relationship where like I have to just stop and just look at um, you know there's always things that you could criticize and there's always things that you could nitpick at to make better but like if you were to stop and train your brain to look at the abundance in the space to look at um, to look at the fact that you are so you are so lucky like in so many places in the world they have no food for three days or they're taking care of you know in Africa the women take care of other women's children's because the woman the mom had died of like AIDS or something like that and the men you know are not really that responsible in Africa and so at least this is per se to the women that I've worked with in Africa and so there's these women who you know are like literally walking miles to, to work, to work in a, in a, like in a market that everybody's competing against each other and they're cutting their prices below what they actually paid to create the commodity to sell, the bull to sell. And then they go home and they're hungry. They haven't eaten. And they're, sir, they're like taking care of kids that aren't even their own kids, right? Like think about like just the amount of effort it takes to, I know, to raise one child. Um, and hopefully I'll know soon if we, have another child coming but like you know what I mean like the, the amount of work and and love and compassion that takes the amount of give and generosity that takes is a ton 
and there's people in the world that that are taking care of other people's kids and the point in sharing that with you is a piece that I want to talk to you about today which is um, amateur versus pro I wish I could put this I don't know why I can't put this in the um, in the um, in the Facebook live let me just see yeah I, I don't know if I can't put for some reason it won't let me put it in but I'm gonna see if I can upload it right afterwards because it's up on my it's up on my desktop right now but it reminds me of um, this whole like piece that I did for my clients about two years ago and, and I really pushed it all year long and so my point in sharing this with you is um, you know you can either hopefully I can upload this document but if I can't upload this document then maybe go back and listen to this Facebook live and write this down um, because I pushed this all year long and I had one of our strongest pace clubs um, profit acceleration club for entrepreneurs it's a group that I take through for a year I teach them how to you know fine-tune their message how to build an audience and how to sell to that audience and it's really the foundation of making really good money in your life and um, and I pushed this whole concept an entire year through this group and they just really got it because you could self-manage your mind which is the most precious commodity that you have and the only difference between you succeeding and not in fact I was doing a web class a training yesterday and um, I, I gave a bonus on the training that if you stayed to the training all the way through and you were really active in the chat box that I would give you an incentive and a bonus to build your business and what I gave on the web class last night was that you could come to a private cocktail party with me I do a private cocktail party for just my list power clients um, the day before the zone event starts in September in Palm Springs right and I said you can come to that cocktail party with me there's only like a small group of people who come to that because not all of our list power clients come to the zone event so it's nice because I get to like hold you hug you talk to you about your business and just really get intimate with what you're trying to work on and so I said you can come to that for free um, and I also said that they could sit in on one of my 90 minute trainings with marketing mastery on July 12th Oh, big yawn on July 12th um, which you know I mean our clients those are our mentorship clients so like that's a huge value to be able to sit in and just shadow what our clients are doing and there was this woman who messaged on the chat and said oh my god I would love to do that but but I can't because I live in the UK and I said to her, just stop right there. You're already stopping before you have an opportunity to be successful. And this is what we do, right? We say, oh, I really want that. I really want that relationship. I really want that baby. I really want um, that business. I really want to make a million dollars. I really want to impact the world. I want to start a nonprofit. And then we go, but uh, I can't do it because I live in the UK. Or uh, uh, I can't do it because I don't have a supportive spouse. Well, uh, I can't do it because I have a full-time job. Or and we come up with so we come up with all these like uh, I can't right. Well, that's what we call an amateur. And you have to manage your head to make sure that you operate in an element of what's called a pro. And I'm going to talk to you about the difference between amateur and pro and just stop everything you're doing for a second and just get intimate with me for just a moment and just ask yourself, you can even you can even grab a paper and pen if it's around you and you put amateur and pro on the piece of paper. And every time I say a word that's like an amateur, put a dot or a line. And every time I say a word that's a pro, put a dot or a line. And see how often you operate in a state of amateur or pro. Okay, so here I go. So amateur pro. So amateur, the difference, the difference between um, amateur and pro is an amateur operates off of their feelings. I feel like doing this today. I don't feel like going for the run, so I won't. I feel like, um, you know, doing sales calls today. Uh, I don't feel like it because my dog died, right? Like, so amateur always works off of how they feel. They're talking about how they feel all the time, right? A pro operates off commitment. So that looks like, um, you know what? I really just don't feel like going for a run today. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to put my runners on because I'm committed right and so it's not that the it's not that the pro doesn't ever feel a feeling of like I don't want to or this feels hard they do but they often you'll hear a pro say something like god that was really hard right like I, there were moments where I didn't know if I would complete it right but they they're focused
reconnect. Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay, good. The pros focus is actually on the commitment. It's on the next step. You know, in Pace Club, I often say focus on the step you're in. A pro is actually focused on the step they're in. They don't know whether they can do it or not, but that's irrelevant. They still keep going because they're hyper-focused on the step that they're in. So an amateur operates off feelings, a pro operates off commitment. An amateur blames. I'm not getting enough from my coach. Um, my husband or my wife isn't supportive. Um, they didn't give me all the information I needed before I could make a decision, right? An amateur blow, uh, an amateur blows, an amateur pl uh, blames. So you could be at the airport and the flight gets canceled and you start blaming the person in front of you or you start yelling at, you know, at the, the, the check-in clerk or you start getting frustrated that the plumber, you know, didn't call you on time and so now it screwed up your whole day. An amateur blames right? A pro never blames. A pro just takes responsibility. A pro just says, you know what? Um, security lines were super long and I didn't get here on time. And I thought I got here two hours before and would be ample time for me to travel, but it's, you know, a holiday weekend and I should have gotten here three hours before. A pro always takes responsibility. Let's say in a relationship, um, you're, you're, you know, you've got a rub in a relationship where things aren't working. An amateur will blame the other partner. A pro will actually say, well, you know what, I, I totally see where I played a part in creating that emotion for you, right? So you can see if you're a pro, things, um, the energy on things like basically neutralizes really quickly into a space of power. An amateur hopes an amateur, now don't get me wrong, there's a huge power to the energy of hope, right? But an amateur always sits in the element of hope, where a pro plans. A pro actually goes, okay, in today, I don't just hope that today is a great day, as I lead my marketing mastery clients. I've actually got a full-blown plan of how to actually have them be successful today and tomorrow. I also have a follow-up plan to help them implement it. Right? And so pro plans where an amateur goes into, let's say, a mastermind or leading a video or doing a Facebook Live like this and says, Oh, I hope this is good. I hope they like it. Right? A pro is completely buried in their plan. An amateur is indecisive. Where are you being indecisive right now? It's stealing your dream. Right? It's stealing everything that you want in life. So an amateur is indecisive. A pro is always decisive. So you might ask me, like, okay, well, how do you do that if you just don't know? You just guess. You just guess. You make the best guess that you can, and you move forward with it, and you trust yourself that no matter what, you're going to complete what you start, and you're going to learn something from this, and it's going to move you forward, whether it's a quantum leap, or just a little bit forward. But regardless, a pro is happy with forward movement. A pro isn't like blaming the fact or hoping or indecisive or worried about like getting enough, right? That's an element of amateur. An amateur is indecisive. You're indecisive because you're worried about making the wrong decision because you're greedy about wanting to get the most out of every situation. A pro doesn't worry about that. A pro just makes a decision, makes their best guess and moves forward and then knows that they're going to cross the finish line in the top 5% of anybody in their industry because they always complete what they start, right? It'll, it'll keep moving you forward. So an amateur is focused on survival. So are you setting goals and aspirations that, like when I started my business, I had a goal of $5,000 a month. I just wanted to comfortably survive, right? And so for you, if you want to be a pro, stop like stop focusing on survival, focus on your effort. So that goes into what I was just talking about with the decisiveness. A pro will focus on their effort, the step that they're in. I say to my son, like, and so does Ash, his, his dad, we literally um, praise our son on his effort. It's, we don't want to sit there and go, oh my God, you're so smart. You're so smart. You're so good. Um, don't get me wrong. We say you're a good soccer player, but we say you're good because you put in the effort. So a pro, and by the way, this would be one of the single most best ways that you can parent your children and parent yourself. 
if you commend yourself on the effort you put in, what will happen is that the strength of your effort will grow and you will find that your success in life will be much quicker, much stronger, you'll be much happier. So don't put your effort on being good, put your effort on the, or put, don't put your attention on the, being good, put your attention on the effort that you put on. An amateur listens to everyone. So this drives me fucking crazy when I coach my clients. Excuse my bad potty mouth language, but it drives me crazy. Um, when, when you get good coaching, and you might even think, you might even go into amateur and blame the think that you're not getting good coaching because you haven't gotten a good result from the coaching, right? So that's being an amateur versus being a pro and taking responsibility for where you fell apart, right? But an amateur listens to everyone, right? So I have a client right now who's actually doing good. She's doing six figures. I'm going to see her at this mastermind. And I love her. She's a good friend of mine. And she is constantly asking everybody, should I charge this or should I charge that? Right? She doesn't, she's not decisive and makes a decision and sticks to it. Even though she thinks she's powerful in that way, she's often not. In fact, if a client pushes back to her and says, I can't afford that price, here's what I can afford, she will yield to that, to that leadership because she still operates as an amateur and she listens to everyone. Another way that this, look, this shows up is when you have a plan, which is very pro, right? We talked about that. When you have a plan and then you second guess the plan because you heard somebody else talking about something else. So an amateur listens to everyone. A pro just listens. A pro just listens. Do you hear that? I can hear the air conditioning. The pro just listens. It's an element of being present. Ash always says to me, the power of you, Shanda, is you listen, right? So when you're operating in a pro, people will actually identify those qualities of being and they'll say them to you all the time. So I just listen. I don't need to take on what anybody says, whether it's a client, you know, complaining or a client celebrating, right? I have a ton of clients celebrating right now. I listen. And I, love, and I listen to how they're listening to me. I listen to how they're, my coaching is landing with them. I listen to myself on how something's landing with me. Like, I just listen. I don't get emotionally charged about it. However, when an amateur listens to everyone, they're getting emotionally charged to all these different pieces, which then scatters their energy, and they get less productive. Um, an amateur copies other people. I talk about this all the time with my clients, um, especially my business coaching clients because they tend to think that building audiences and learning how to sell to them and all these things are the way to, to actually teach people how to build a business. However, when you copy other people, what happens is you'll actually back your business up against a wall because that idea, you know, if you've ever read the book Big, Big Idea um, by I think Elizabeth Gilbert, it's a great book because ideas, um, they land with someone, that person builds it out into the world and it becomes their idea. It's when you steal somebody else's idea, it was never your authentic idea and therefore you don't have the actual insight to build it out as big as you really wanna grow your business. I've seen it a million times over, you'll end up not feeling passionate about what you're doing, you'll end up not having what it takes to take that idea all the way through to complete freedom, right, to millions of dollars, which I want you, you know, a pro sets plans that are big, right, and so don't copy. An amateur copies other people. Um, in fact, there was a time in my life that I literally stopped even reading because I needed to find my voice and find myself, right? And so sometimes you have to just stop the noise of even listening to anyone so that you can actually figure out like, who are you, right? And so stop listening to everyone, just listen, stop copying other people, credit people and acknowledge them for insights that they've actually given you. So a pro always credits people. You know who was a pro? Wayne Dyer was a pro. Wayne Dyer was a pro. He built his entire business on basically being a reporter for all these great things that he was studying in life, the Tao Te Ching, the Bible, you know, um, law of attraction, like all the things that he learned in life, he actually just regurgitated those to us. And he credited, excuse me, 
you credited the people and acknowledged the, the, the context of the people and the books that he was actually reading that were making a difference for him. So that's what a pro does. A pro doesn't have to own other people's content or ideas. That's what an amateur does. So when you learn something from a mentor and then you take it and you reteach it, you're actually operating in an amateur state, which means that the life of that idea doesn't have any ground to actually serve you or its audience to the level and the capacity that it can. So sure, might you get some success? For sure. Yes, because it's an idea that the world likes. That's why you like it, right? But it won't give you the legs that you want to be able to grow something out to the level that you want. So basically, you're wasting your time because you're spending a lot of well-oiled time on something that's really not going to go somewhere substantial. You will hit a wall, and that wall will not be climbable. Um, amateurs. Amateurs wait for inspiration. So it goes back to that feeling piece that I started this. Um, if you're operating in an, am in, in an am amateur state, you'll say things like, I'm just not feeling inspired. Do you know what a pro does? Passion, passion happens when you're good. So I know that when I was learning webinars, I wasn't passionate about them. In fact, they drained me. But now that I'm good at them and I like them, um, those words interchange. I'm good at them, so I like them. When I wasn't good at them, I didn't like them. When I wasn't good at running or I was out of shape, I hated to do it, right? But that's why like when someone says, I hate to run, I'm like, I don't care what you like or what you hate. It's about get good at it and then you'll start to love it, right? Last thing, an amateur dwells and sits on things. Like an amateur just sits there and like ponders over things and dwells on it and sits on it, holds grudges, um, you know, goes back to all these elements of amateurs operate in feeling, blame, hope, indecisiveness, focus on survival, copies other people and waits for inspiration and they dwell and they sit on it. Approach is problem solves. A pro just says, I just gave coaching with one of our clients the other day. A pro says, you know, if there's a problem right now, it's not about somebody else causing the problem. It's about what do I need to do to problem solve this? I'll give you an idea. So one of our, one of our, um, one of our sales girls said to, said to us once that, um, you know, the problem is that, um, the problem is that people go and Google this or Google that and find this. And I'm like, okay, so, so that means that you're not actually helping people get all the information they need to be able to make a decision. So why don't you go find trainings that I've done so that you can actually give them the training so that these people who don't know me will actually get to know me so that when you actually make an offer, they don't feel like they still have to think about making a decision or not. They already know whether or not I'm a good coach for them or not, right? So a pro will say, what's the problem? And they will solve the problem versus talk about the problem, right? There's two, two totally different ways of being and, and operating. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, like I said, I would actually recommend that you write that out and you put it up on a wall because as long as you're operating in a state of pro, you're going to find that life gets much easier. You're going to find that projects happen. You're going to find that you're getting the expectations that you want from marketing campaigns that you put out there because you don't stop. You don't operate off feelings. You operate off commitment. Um, you'll stop being indecisive, which is stealing the, the quickness of growing your company or the quickness of growing your relationship. If you want things to move faster, which a lot of people do that follow me, um, then you got to operate in a decisive state. So you got to operate in pro. So I'll take a moment and I'll, I'll see if I can upload this worksheet for you guys so that you can see it. Um, I taught it at the Zone event um, a few years ago. I'll actually probably teach it again in more depth because I think it's an important piece. But with that being, Christy, I turned pro this year. Yeah, you did, Christy. Last year, you definitely were operating in a state of pro. And so you got the results of getting no results, right? And then when you operate in a state of pro, you will start to get results. You have to. It's just successful people leave clues. They just do. If you follow them around, they're not perfect. It's not about you trying to be perfect. Don't beat yourself up for not being perfect. Oh, my little son just woke up. Um, but it is about but it is about you operating in a state of pro most of the time. And when you're operating in a state of amateur, be responsible enough, which isn't a character of a pro, be responsible enough to be able to operate back into a state of pro. Honey, you can let them come out.
if he wants to come out. You guys want to say good morning to Zach? Come here, baby. Do you want to come say good morning? Do you want to come say good morning? Come here. Come say good morning. I see you have a phone already. Say good morning. No. Say good morning. You don't want to say good morning? I love you. Morning. morning? That was your little morning? Oh, that wall jumped out at you. I love being a mom. It's the best thing on the planet. Anyway, um, so we are here in a hotel, downtown San Diego. We will be heading down to the mastermind. I'm going to go take a shower and blow dry my hair and go down and have breakfast with our clients. Um, and for the next two days, I'll be doing that. And so I will be Facebook living again tomorrow morning um, from the hotel. He actually figured out how to turn on the phone. That's crazy to me. Um, anyway, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Mwah.